Okay, today I want to talk about kernel dimensionality reduction, which is a, a particular type of nonlinear uh, dimension reduction. Of course, we are talking about sufficient dimension reduction, that uh, we have some uh, sufficient dimension reduction, which we, where we, we have an output space as well. So we have extra information. You know, uh, principal component analysis, uh, canonical correlation analysis, let's say uh, sliced uh, inverse uh, regression and uh, save. All of these algorithms are, are just for, for linear. When we have a linear uh, manifold, linear space, but uh, if we, when we, we generalize to highly nonlinear data, we should use some techniques like kernel dimension reduction, uh, and uh, uh, let's see. But before I, I start, I want to talk about, uh, I want to introduce six of the top important scientists who changed the world in machine learning. Bernard Schulp in Max Planck, uh, he worked on yeah, the thesis on Kernel's methods uh, in 2000, I think. Vladimir Vapnik, uh, this Russian uh, scientist, he, he, he is the father of machine learning and uh, developed a statistical learning theory, especially support vector machine. And uh, so he's a statistician. Uh, Kenji Fukumuzi, uh, he is a statistician, statistician as well. And he's a Japanese guy who is interested in Hilbert spaces and its applications in machine learning in particular. Francis Bach and Jordan, these two scientists are friends in California in uh, statistics and computer science department. Jadir Appel, uh, he, uh, I have read uh, three of his books on causality, which is the future of uh, um, artificial intelligence in my opinion. And uh, okay, so let's just review a very important article about uh, dimensionality reduction for super when when we hear about supervised learning it's uh, we are talking about sufficient dimension reduction so this japanese guy uh, he this is his ideas uh, together with uh, michael jordan and uh, so the idea is to reduce this space just like any other dimension reduction uh, algorithm, but here we have an output space as well, some extra information. So, so we call it response variable, and uh, x is the uh, some people say economists say explanatory variables, uh, even in, people in health science they call it explanatory variables, some people say predictor, uh, and uh, uh, so we want to reduce the space so that we don't lose any information. So by, by this projection, we don't want to lose any information. So we divide, we decompose X into, for example, the space, um, the dimension given by U and the, the dimension, the space given by V. So uh, in, in the previous work, uh, Michael Jordan talked about uh, mutual information. The way we talk about independent component analysis, uh, that uh, unlike, unlike PCA, uh, he, which is interested in minimum variance reduction, but in ICA, we want to minimize uh, the mutual information. So, so for example, in PCA, these dimensions are orthonormal, but in ICA, uh, they, they could have some uh, angle between them. So there is no limitation on that. And uh, uh, so our goal uh, is to reduce the space. So uh, we want uh, Y to depend on U. When we project it, when we project X and U, we don't want Y to depend on V as well. So before I, I continue, I need to review some ideas from kernel, uh, from, from Hilbert spaces. For example, this is uh, uh, Hilbert space. And this is a linear algebra, linear subs subspaces that engineers 
knowledge. But more generally, we can talk about Hilbert space. Even more generally, we can talk about Banach space. And even more generally, so it, it, it can be as abstract of a vector space and different, uh, you can define topology. Uh, for example, in Hilbert space, we define the metric by some inner product, like your inner product. So for F in Hilbert space and K in Hilbert space, you can just, uh, you can uh, find F of X is just the inner product with the kernel. This is the kernel. And uh, an example is Gaussian kernel. And uh, so uh, there is a theorem that this is a theorem that uh, because this this the right hand side is linear, it's a linear functional. So in the proof of this theorem, we use the real representation theorem to say that there exists. So there exists a covariance. Let's call it covariance operator cross covariance cross covariance operator uh, from uh, uh, it goes to from Hilbert space to Hilbert space it could be h1 h2 for example from f f goes to g using this operator and uh, so so this is an operator uh, that uh, applies in Hilbert space and produces another Hilbert space so so, uh, so the corollary using this corollary, we can uh, we can we can we can relate we can relate these um, uh, expectations with some operators. So uh, the importance of this corollary is that, uh, for example, in the original space X. It is, uh, we, it, we cannot separate it if we are doing classification like linear support in like a support vector machine or even dimensional reduction. So we map it to another space for, but we are working in dual space of, uh, of Hilbert space, edge of dual space. For example, F is in the Hilbert space, G is in Hilbert space. In this space, everything is crystal clear. We can do any kinds of functional analysis and uh, relate the problems in X space to H space. For example, we want to relate the inner product inside, uh, inside Hilbert space. We want to relate it to some expectations that we understand in the original space. So this is the motivation, and so we can we can calculate this using this curly. You can calculate this. So, uh, so we divide. So we have h one, which has a kernel of k one. We have h two, another Hilbert space. This one has kernel k two. We have another Hilbert space h three, which has the kernel space k three, and so all of these are just some uh, using some operators uh, for example sigma uh, u of y uy or sigma uh, ux any any kind that we can we can uh, map from one hilbert space to another hilbert space so we define the uh, the covariance as this so we want to make some assumptions and with definitions as well. For example, this is just a definition. There is no proof. We define this. We define this because we want to relate, as I said, the inner product uh, a variable, the inner product to some expectations that we understand. So, uh, so the, this, this linear, this inner product is uh, calculated using these expectations. So uh, it is not an abstract space anymore because we can define it, we can describe it, and we can explain it. So uh, in proposition five, I want to show you uh, that uh, why this is the case. Uh, so um, so here, uh, we want to relate this inner product into 
uh, in, in, with, with the some expectations that uh, we need to solve. And uh, before I before I talk about uh, this one, which is uh, an important theorem to show how we can reduce uh, the the dimensionality of the problem, I want to review. I want to just review. Uh, law of total variance in Wikipedia, you have the proof in Wikipedia, it's so easy. So we use this law of total variance in the proof of theorem 7, as you see. So so it's just a law of uh, total variance. Variance is equal to, to expectation of variance, variance of expectation, okay? And then we take the expectations of both sides. And the interesting thing is that if a z term becomes null, then then we have everything. We have reduced the space, and and why this term should be null uh, could be seen like this. Because if the variance of uh, this uh, object with respect to v, uh, if the variance is equal to zero, it means it means this equation holds, and this is exactly what we want, because we don't lose any information. So this is the beauty of theorem seven. Uh, and uh, so the whole algorithm is just, uh, we have created a structure to say that uh, this relation holds. And uh, so we have proved uh, using theorem seven that cross covalent, if we just minimize if we just minimize this covariance operator, then everything is is perfect. Then then we can find the parameters of these uh, mappings. So we have some parameters, of course. So our our, our infrastructure is like semi parametric parametric. It's not non parametric. It's not parametric. It's a semi parametric. So we just um, uh, uh, estimate it as we do for anything, for any expectation. And uh, uh, we have uh, such a formula for for this. But, uh, so we just need to minimize this covariance. And we can do it by, um, be, because uh, we have reduced it to a matrix, uh, we have, we can, the, the measure could be trace, the measure could be determinant, but here, uh, they use the determinant as a measure of this uh, uh, optimization problem. But uh, the bad thing about this article uh, is, is that um, the, it is not an explicit solution, so we have to use uh, gradient descent and some uh, messy algorithm, line search, and uh, calculate uh, the parameters uh, that uh, enable us to find the space, the reduced space. All right.